Hey Bruce, I'm reaching out to say thanks so much for coming out to lunch today. You and I didn't get much time to talk, but I just wanted to say that I'm really excited to be part of your family. Emily and I have dated for so long. I was wondering when the time would come for me to finally meet her parents. And here we are, having a beautiful lunch together. I look forward to us getting along in the future. Us getting along in the future? Is that really what you think is going to happen? Of course I do. When I decided to marry Emily, I realized the consequences of it. I knew that being a part of her family and us getting along is important. I have every intention of us getting to know each other a lot more. If you have time, we can go out for lunches like this more often. I know a lot of cool places in town. As you know, I'm a visual designer, and I often have to go around creating designs for different businesses. A lot of restaurants and cafes want something done on their website. I know my fair share of places with good food. <laughs> you don't actually intend on taking me to another mundane place like we went to today, do you? Do you really think I'm the type of guy that enjoys doing that type of thing? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought today was a really good day. I thought you actually enjoyed the food and the atmosphere at the cafe. Your wife certainly did. Yeah, of course she would like some pretty little place like that. That's exactly what the girls like to do on their weekend. Do you really think it was the type of place that you and I should go to? I thought that this was going to be the day where those two get to hang out and then after that, we get to go to some place that men actually hang out at. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, what were you thinking then? What is that even supposed to mean? You're a man, aren't you? Or am I wrong about that? Is there a chance that instead of an actual man marrying my daughter, it's some transvestite dressed up as one? Of course, I'm a man. Why are you saying something so bizarre? You actually think that I'm a woman or something? Well, if you can't even think of a place that we would actually enjoy each other's company, then you can't blame me for being doubtful, can you? Oh, okay. Maybe I should have chosen a better venue. I'll admit that the cafe today had a really calm, nature-like theme that girls tend to enjoy a lot more. I should have thought of something more suited towards our taste. I'll find a cafe that's a little bit more loud and rambunctious next time. A couple of really good places have popped into my mind. We'll go next time. This has got to be a joke right now. I'm actually talking to a female. Cafes are for the ladies. Does my daughter know about this? Does she know that she's secretly dating one of her own? She needs to find out before she actually marries you. We need to cancel this thing off. Hey, uh, can you stop with that already? Stop assuming that I'm a female. Why do you keep saying that? Because you're not listening to me. There is no way that a guy would go to a cafe and enjoy it. What are you talking about? There are guys that go into cafes all the time. It's a really good place to relax and have a coffee. It wakes you up for the things that you have to do for that day. Is it really that weird? If I have to explain that to you, then you're already lost. Honestly, I need some proof that you're not playing on the other side of the field. Bruce, I am not a girl. Stop insinuating that I am. But I can't help but do that. I mean, are you telling me right now that you're an actual guy that enjoys going to places like that? Is that really what you do in your spare time? Well, uh, like I said, it's part of my job. I know all the local businesses in town, and I have to go in there, look at the venue, and assess the products. Not only that, but I do go in there in my spare time. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't get what's so funny about that. I find it quite enjoyable. Is there really something weird with that? Of course there is. It just totally goes against what a guy is meant to be. I mean, he's not meant to be sitting on his butt all day doing nothing. He's meant to be out there performing. He's meant to be active. Are you trying to tell me that the thing you enjoy the most is sitting around eating some fancy sandwich that they make at some cafe? I mean, did you look at the prices of those things today? $15 for something like that? 
That is insane. My wife can make a sandwich for about $5, and she doesn't need to take half an hour to get it to your table. Okay, look, I understand that there's a little bit of a wait time on the food. The price is a little bit absurd, but at the same time, you did enjoy it, didn't you? I mean, that was one of the best places in town. They're well-renowned for the sandwiches they have there. They use a lot of expensive ingredients and combine them in a way that makes the sensation in your mouth magical. When people pass through town, it's one of the places they stop at. It is a huge hit. You should really check out its Instagram page. There's a lot of famous celebrities getting a sandwich there. Look at you. You really talk about it like it's the best thing in the world, don't you? Let me remind you, Sam. It's a sandwich. You don't need to overcomplicate it. I didn't even know half the stuff that I was eating today. If you ask me, you better keep it simple and as greasy as possible. Some basic bread from the supermarket, egg and a bacon on top of that, and it is the best combination that you can get. You don't need all these weird ingredients from a different country or whatever. And think about it. That was the driest sandwich I have ever eaten today. I mean, do they have any fat in that meat at all? Well, actually, that's the really cool part about the place. Not only is the food incredibly delicious, but they're really good at cutting the fat content of the food. It's actually a really healthy place to eat out at. It kind of makes up for the price. Are you kidding me right now? So you're telling me that they have pretty much zero grease and they have the nerve to change the price? What a ripoff. Someone's got to sue that place. Did you see the amount of customers in there? They don't even know that they're getting a really bad deal. Wait, you're angry that there wasn't enough grease on the sandwich? You're damn straight I am. If you ask me, the greasier, the better. I mean, that's what me and the boys would always eat on our break. You know, we can't exactly bring our wives to the workforce. We have our special diner just down the road from the station. Now that place has the greasiest sandwiches you can ever eat. I mean, that stuff is basically gushing out of your mouth when you bite into the food. I'm telling you right now, that old Betsy that works down there could give you a run for your money. I always told my wife she needs to get better at sandwich making. If she doesn't level up her game, I might be falling for that old Betsy in the diner. Wow, okay. I think you and I have a completely different sense of what food should taste like. I happen to really dislike greasy food, but it's interesting that we're different in that way. Also, I don't think that you should talk about your wife like that. She seems like a really nice person. I'm sure she puts a lot of effort into those sandwiches. I can tell that she really cares about you. Of course she cares about me. She thinks I'm the man. I'm the guy that rules the roost. I mean, if you think about it, she's got to work to get my attention. A guy like me working in the position that I'm in gets a lot of attention, you know? And don't think that my age gets in the way of it. It actually helps me a lot. Yeah? Well, I don't really doubt that if I'm being honest. You're a firefighter, after all. And not only that, you're the chief of the department, right? You run the place. You're in a very respectable position, Bruce. Thank you for your hard work. Yeah, yeah. I always knew you were the type to suck up to people. Do you really think that I need reminding that what I do is noble? People tell me that stuff every day. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted to show a little bit of gratitude. I mean, you've been doing that type of thing your whole life, right? Saving lives and putting yourself in danger? It's really admirable. Oh, come on, stop sucking up to me. You know, I really don't like sycophants. Is that really what you think I'm doing right now? I'm not trying to suck up to you. I know that you're my father-in-law and everything, but that's not the way that I'm going to impress you. There's not a lot of people that I meet that work in the position that you do. I'm genuinely grateful for it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Saving people is the boring part of the job. But when you're in a position that I'm in, you have to absolutely love it. Well, I'm not going to deny that. If you didn't love it, you wouldn't be continuing for as long as you have, right? What I meant is that you must love it. 
You have to love it on an instinctual level. I mean, you have to love the thrill of it. You have to love jumping through the flames, love going in there like you're about to die. You have to love every little time that a complication arises, the building collapses, and your team is pinned down. You have to work under pressure, do what you can to get them and yourself out of there. That sounds like a really exciting job. I can tell it's something that you're very passionate about. Passionate is an understatement. But things have gotten really dull recently. There is just no fires in this area. It's not like it used to be. We used to have crackhead kids lighting up their mom's t-shirt in the backyards because she told them to do their homework and whatnot. Man, those were some good days. I mean, we would go out at least once a week, me and the boys. God, I miss them. It's a shame that a lot of my closest friends have died in the line of our work. They're not like these new recruits that we get. They remind me a lot of you and that wussy work you do. Cowards! I'm pretty sure that every time they walk through that building, their little taco down there starts to shrivel up. Uh, hang on a minute. What did you just call what I do? Did you actually say it was wussy? That's exactly what I called it. There is no other way to think about it. It's the type of thing that girls do. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding where you're coming from, Bruce. I don't see how my job is feminine in the least. I mean, it's not feminine or masculine in the first place. It's something that anyone can do. It's art, after all. It's about being creative. Are you kidding me right now? Is that the argument you're gonna give me? Are you really gonna tell me that you were born as the physically superior sex and you're not even gonna use that power? You're not even gonna use your body? You're just gonna sit around at your chair playing with your little art tools all day? Come on, admit it. Even you know that what you're doing is a girl's job. Actually, no. I don't think that way at all. I mean, sure, the job that you do as a fireman definitely requires some level of physical prowess. But that doesn't mean that what I do is a girl's job. And you know what? Let's say it was. Who cares? Why is it such a big deal to you anyway? How could it not be a big deal to me? You do realize that I care a lot about my daughter, don't you? Just take a look at her. She's the only girl in a massive family of boys. She's been growing up with some strong men her whole life. I would have expected her to actually fall for a strong man. So I'm really worried about why she chose some little wuss like you. Bruce, I think you need to calm down with all the insults already. I mean, I'm about to be your son-in-law, and you're already starting us off on a bad start. I mean, would you like it if I called you those names? How would you like it if I called you a wimp? That would be hilarious, actually. I'd love to hear that word come out of your mouth. I'd love to see you look me in the eye and say it. I think you would just chatter your teeth off before you could even produce the sound. Do you really have the balls to say that type of thing to me? Are you trying to say that I wouldn't have the courage to do it? Of course you wouldn't. I mean, a big burly guy like me that's been toughening himself up his whole life, and a little girl like you sitting at his computer. We're just on two different playing fields. You and I both know you're going to be intimidated by me. That's a really interesting thing to say. I mean, sure, I'll admit that you might be physically tougher than me, but that doesn't mean that I'm scared of you. But you know what? I wouldn't say something like that to you in the first place. It's just not the type of person I am. Even if I did think that way about you, I like to respect my fellow man no matter what job they do. So I'd appreciate it if you did the same for me. Do you think you could stop calling me a wuss now? Wow, look at you. You're such a diplomat, aren't you? I'm sure my little daughter is going to have a fun time being married to you. What's that supposed to mean? Well, come on. You just always want to keep the peace, right? You can't handle a little bit of turmoil. You can't handle a situation that puts you on pins and needles. Oh, that's not true. I'm a fully grown adult. I've had plenty of situations like that. I just don't see the point in causing an argument where there doesn't need to be one. 
Yeah, well, that type of thinking isn't going to get you far, son. I mean, I'll tell you right now. You're dealing with quite the bellicose bunch of people. I mean, sure, my wife is as calm as a couple of chimes clapping in the wind. But everyone, apart from her, has quite the short fuse on them. How so? Are you talking about yourself and your sons? I'm not just talking about them. I'm talking about everyone on my side of the family. Including my little daughter, Emily. In fact, she's probably the worst out of all of us. Say one little thing to tip her over the edge and she'll just explode right at you. Really? The Emily that you're describing right now sounds a lot different to the one that I'm dating. I guess a lot of surprises are lying in wait for the moment we get married. What do you mean the moment you get married? That's if you guys get married to begin with. I'm sorry? Uh, don't you realize that we had a lunch today to announce that we are getting married? If you haven't realized already, it's already set in stone. Not if I have anything to say about it. There's a reason why you guys met with us today. It's because she needs my assessment of you. Huh? Your assessment? Of course, are you stupid? Do you need me to say it a second time? My assessment. I mean, let's face it. That girl Emily is one traditional girl. There is a reason why you like her so much, right? She's not like all the other girls. I am not going to deny that she has something special about her. That's the reason why I decided to be with her in the first place. It's the reason why I want to go as far as to marry her. Exactly. And that's not by chance. I'll tell you it's not all genetics. It's all in the way that you raise them. Now, I've raised my sons to be tough, burly men just like their father. And I wanted my daughter to be exactly like her mother. I wanted her to be caring, nurturing, and looking out for the family. The only thing that I couldn't keep under control is her temper. I mean, when I say she's got a short fuse, I mean it. You better be careful when you're married to her. In fact, I would even reconsider if it's the right thing to do. You don't even know if you can handle the beast in her yet. Well, I'm not sure what you're talking about right now. Her and I have dated for a long time. I haven't seen any hint of this so-called beast that you keep referring to. Though I'm telling you, it's going to reveal itself soon. I can guarantee you that much. I can tell just by the way you talk and the type of work that you do that you're probably not ready for it. A little wuss like you was going to choke under her powerful energy. Hey, didn't I just tell you to stop calling me that? I'm not a wuss. Well, if you weren't a wuss, why would you take me to such a girly place like this, making me eat that disgusting, demasculating food? What was that crap called again? Cottage cheese or something? You should have taken me to a manly place, and I would have thought differently of you. Okay, well, what type of place were you expecting? A bar or something? Of course. Do you even need to ask? Of course I wanted to go to a bar. You should know that a bar is the place to go. You know what I mean, right? Don't tell me that boys can't even enjoy a little stripper joint every now and then. Are you seriously recommending that when I'm about to marry your daughter? Is that the impression you want of me? You really want me to take you to a vile place like that? Well, hey, it would show that you and I have some common ground, right? Okay, and what am I meant to do about Emily and her mother? Do you really expect me to just drag them along too? Of course not. You should have just kept them in that unremarkable establishment that you call a cafe. Let the girls have their fun together and let the boys have their fun. I mean, are you telling me that you wouldn't have had a good time with your father-in-law watching a couple of pretty girls walk around topless? Okay, well, my objective today was to get along with you, of course. But I also wanted to get to know my mother-in-law, too. I can't exactly take her to that type of establishment. She's not going to think highly of me. Even if you do, what's there to know about her? Are you really that eager to find something special about her? I'm telling you right now, I've been with her for a long time. There's nothing interesting about that woman. I'm sorry? 
Is that the way you talk about your own wife? Well, hey, I'm just being honest here. I mean, I've known her for ages. The only thing that you need to know about her is that she makes a pretty decent sandwich and she's good around the house. You can find that out in about less than a minute of conversing with me. And then boom, and now you know your mother-in-law. That is such a horrible way to talk about someone you've been spending your whole life with. Is she happy in her marriage with you? Are you seriously going to start doubting me? I mean, don't you see that she's got a pretty good guy? She should consider herself lucky that she's with me. And you know what? I want my daughter to feel the same way about you. But I'm looking at the situation and I think it's the other way around. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Come on, you really gonna sit there and act dumb with me? We both know what is going on here. I'm not actually sure what you're talking about right now. You're acting like I'm doing something sinister, and I really don't know what it is. So you're really just gonna sit there and play stupid with me, aren't you? You're thinking if you don't say anything, I'm not gonna find out. Well, you know what? How about I just tell you what I've observed and know? I know that when my daughter met you, she was in her corporation. Working hard, earning some decent money. Then she met you. You're doing something as pitiful as, uh, what was it again, visual behind or something? No, it's called visual design. Yeah, whatever. Who cares about the name? The fact of the matter is, you've got a really good situation now. I mean, she's bringing all the big bucks from that corporation she's in, and you just gotta sit at home all day doing nothing. Now today, when we had that lunch, I only had about half an hour to an hour to converse with you, and I've already ascertained that much. Tell me that it's anything different. So, this is where all this disdain is coming from. Is that actually the reason why you don't like me, Bruce? You think that I'm trying to use your daughter for her money or something? I don't think that. I know it. I know a dirty little rodent when I see one. What an insincere way of thinking about me. Don't you see that her and I have two different jobs? We're both working for the same household, earning pretty much the same income. Do you seriously think I'm trying to just freeload off of her or something? You can try and hide it as much as you want. I know that's exactly what you're doing. I mean, let's face it, you're doing that visual design on your computer, right? I know my daughter. I know she goes into work worrying about what you're actually doing at home. What do you mean, what I'm actually doing? Well, who knows? You could be doing anything. You could be inviting your dumb little friends over to have parties all the time. You probably could have hookers there if you really wanted to. I mean, you're free. There's no reason to assume that you're actually doing work. She must be so concerned about what is going on there. So, that's what you think it is, is it? Well, let me tell you, if that's what she was really worried about, I think she would actually voice her concerns. The fact of the matter is, is that we both had our own circumstances when we started dating, and we were both fine with that. There is no issue here. There's a big issue here. The issue is that I want my daughter to be free of that lifestyle. I was hoping that a proper and more capable man was going to pop up in her life and whisk her away. Save her from that awful, monotonous lifestyle of doing her 9 to 5. But what does she end up doing instead? She gets with the guy that loves to be a nerd for a living. Hey, this is the last time I'm going to warn you about the name calling. I haven't said one mean thing to you so far. Well, start proving yourself that you're a proper guy, and then I might have a little bit more respect for you. Okay, and how do you propose I do that? What do I have to do that is going to satisfy you? You can start by getting rid of that stupid job you have. Get out of that little maid outfit that you walk around the house in, and put some fireman overalls on you. Are you serious right now? You actually expect me to join the firefighter team like you? Yeah, sure, why not? That's gonna toughen you up a little bit. Start acting like a man and being one, and you'll see why what you're doing right now is just downright wrong. I am not doing that, Bruce. You're serious right now? 
What's going on? Are you scared? I should have assumed that much. You don't have the tenacity to do what I do. That's got nothing to do with it at all. I mean, do you really have to look down on what I do that much, Bruce? Can't we just accept that some people are good at some things and other people are good at others? Well, you talk about caring about the relationship between yourself and your father-in-law. If you're not even going to do as much as this, then all I can assume is that you're all talk. You're just singing me honeyed words to get on my good side. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm not the type of man that pays attention to the words of a man. I pay attention to his actions. And your actions have shown me that you're just a sissy that likes to eat cottage cheese all day. That is it, I've had enough. It is the last time you call me names. You hear me? If you have any intention of us getting together and Emily and I having a good marriage with each other, you'll cut that out right now. I'll speak to you whatever way I want, kid. Until you start becoming the type of guy that I can respect, you're gonna get my tough treatment. Hey honey, I've been overloaded with a billion things at work, but I finally got everything done. I've got a small window to talk to you. I need to check that some things are in order. Did you take a look at that special recipe that I left on the table? Hey, it's good to know that you're starting to come up on top of things at work. I know how stressed out you've been lately. As for the recipe, yes, I've seen it. You actually want me to cook this thing, right? Do you seriously want me to answer that question? No, I just put that thing there to make the table look a little bit nicer. Of course I want you to cook the damn thing. God, you know how valuable my time is, right? You're really going to sit there and ask me such a stupid question? Wow, there's no need to get all angry about it. I was just trying to confirm if that's really what you wanted. Yeah, okay, well, next time you're in a stupid mood, how about you try asking me if the sky is blue or not? Let's see if I give you any other answer than blue. Damn, you're in quite a mood. I guess all that stress and work is building up. I see how it is. If I have to cook this incredibly complex recipe for you to get you in a good mood, then that is what I've got to do. I'm sorry, what did you just say? It sounds to me like you're actually complaining about this. That wouldn't be the case, would it? Sam, you're not actually complaining about the food that I want you to cook tonight, are you? Look, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's complex. I mean, I've never cooked something like this before. I'm not even sure if I'm going to pull it off, to be honest. I don't know, that sounds a lot like complaining to me. How about the next time I gave you something to do, you just say, yes ma'am, and get straight to it. I don't need your stupid little side comments about it. Emily, uh, calm down. I know you're angry and everything, but don't take it out on me. Just remember that the root of your stress is from work. I know lately I've become your little punching bag to throw your emotions against, but even I have my limit. Just respect that I'm having it hard as well, okay? Oh my god, can you, like, not give me that spiel about having it hard? I honestly don't want to listen to that right now. I mean, this is coming from the guy whose wife is earning all the money in the family. He gets to sit at home to pretend he's working. Okay, look, settle down, Emily. You said that your time is precious, right? Do you really want to sit here and waste it on arguing about this again? We've already been through this. I don't think that we need to go through it for the millionth time. Yeah, well, until you start convincing me that you're actually doing something, then I'm afraid I'm going to have to keep bringing this up. I've already convinced you time and time again. I mean, you've seen the designs that I've been creating, right? Every time we have this argument, I show them to you. Yeah, but at the end of the day, how can I know if you're the actual one that did all that? Maybe it was just some other guy. Like, you could be lying to me. I think that you're sitting at home just watching Netflix and playing games behind my back. I don't know if you're actually earning money for this family. This is just ridiculous. I don't want to have this argument again. That's fine. I prefer if you just shut your mouth and get those ingredients anyway. That stir-fry recipe that I put on the table looks absolutely amazing. I know it's going to taste good. Then again, it all depends on how you cook it. You better not mess this one up. There are a lot of ingredients there. All right, look, I'll do my best, but I'd really prefer it if you just let me do my own thing. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not such a bad cook. 
I've got a lot of good recipes under my belt. Think about all those times that my family and friends come over. They always say that my cooking is fire. It totally trumps whatever they have to eat in their daily lives. Are you serious? Are you really trying to say that you can cook better than that recipe that I put on the table? Are you actually trying to say that your judgment is better than mine? Well, look, obviously I'm not saying that, but don't you think you could be satisfied with a couple of dishes that I make? I mean, just looking at this recipe, it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to require a lot of ingredients. It just seems like a waste of time and money. The stuff that I cook is pretty simple and doesn't take too long. The taste isn't that bad either, so I don't know why we just don't cook that. Yeah, look, I don't know what universe you live in, but in the universe I live in, food that doesn't taste like dog crap is what we consider delicious. Not that junk you keep trying to push on me every night. What are you trying to say right now? That my cooking isn't that good? Do you really need me to say it for you to realize that? Of course your cooking isn't good. I've just taken a look at that little stew that you cooked the other night. What the hell was that? You're telling me that you didn't like it? It was one of the best recipes I have. It's a modified version of what my mother used to make for me. When I was in university studying visual design, me and my roommates would eat that thing all the time. They would say it was the best meal and they were looking forward to it throughout the whole week. You're trying to tell me that you didn't enjoy it? Oh, wow. Well, this is starting to make sense. Of course, you and your filthy friends from university would enjoy that. They're a bunch of canines themselves and not the cute fluffy type either. The ones that don't like to wash themselves. Hey, can you give that one a rest? I'm really sick of you putting my friends down all the time. You keep making out that they're filthy animals who don't wash themselves. I mean, that's exactly what they are. Don't forget that I've already met them. I've already smelled their stench. Okay, yes, you did meet them, but you met them under a very unique circumstance. I mean, they had just had a party the night before. They're not the type to do that kind of thing. It was really rare. They got absolutely wasted. I mean, it was the night of the graduation ceremony, so I don't blame them for it. Can you just look at them through a more sincere lens, please? Yeah, right. Do you really expect me to look at them at the same level that I'm on? There are a bunch of canines that eat the crap that you cook for them and actually enjoy it. Okay, fine. We'll just agree to disagree on that one. At the end of the day, everyone's got different tastes. They're gonna like certain foods. I don't expect you to like every single dish that I cook. I'll do what I can to cook this little recipe for you tonight, and I hope it makes you happy. Yeah, well, I'm not going to make any promises. I'm not exactly sure if it's going to make me happy. But if you keep cooking proper food like that, my dad might actually like you. Oh, come on. Don't get me started on your dad. There is no way that he would enjoy a dish like this. You know that he only views food as energy. He just wants the sloppiest, most greasy thing that he can get into his body to give him the calories to do that job of his. I know you have to be physically able to work in the type of job that he does, but is it really necessary to eat that many calories? It's been a while since I've seen your dad, but the last time I saw him, he had quite the belly on him. He's getting up there in age. Don't you think he should change his diet to something healthier? Are you seriously going to sit there and judge my dad? He's an adult. He knows what he wants to do with his life. He can do whatever he wants. He doesn't need his ungrateful son-in-law telling him what to do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just say what I think you said? You consider me ungrateful? That is a load of crap if I've ever heard one. What are you saying I should be grateful for? Okay, let me think. You should be grateful to be able to live in the amazing house that we live in. You should be grateful for being able to be married to an awesome girl like me. And most of all, you should be grateful for the fact that I'm the one that's paying for everything. Any fun, any security that you feel like you have in your life is all thanks to me. You really want to take credit for everything, don't you? Honestly, Emily, I don't know why you and I waste time talking about this type of thing. We're both really busy, right? Maybe I'm busy, but I can't say the same for you. I don't get to be a slob that sits at home talking to his filthy friends.
I really don't know what happened to you. You never used to talk to me this way before we got married. What happened all of a sudden? You're treating me like I'm the worst partner in the world. I haven't changed this whole time. I've been doing the same thing that I've always done. Why do you keep talking to me like I'm a piece of crap? Yeah, well... Look, maybe you should ask yourself that question. Use that brain of yours. Does this have something to do with your dad? You know, that first day that I met him, he was incredibly hostile towards me. He didn't have a high opinion of me. It seemed like he was hell-bent on trying to force us to separate. Thankfully, his efforts didn't work. Here we are, married and hopefully gonna have a child in the near future. I can't help but think that he's still telling you things, though. Still poisoning your brain. Is that what you call it? Is that what you think he's doing? You really don't have any respect for that guy, do you? You don't think that maybe he's only telling me those things because he cares about me? You don't think that maybe he's just opening my eyes to how much work needs to be done with you? Okay, well, I understand listening to the people around you and taking on their advice and whatnot. But you really need to take it with a grain of salt. I mean, he clearly has an agenda. I still think he's hell-bent on having us separate. Do you really want to listen to his advice to the detriment of our relationship? Just be a little bit smarter with these types of things, Emily. You know what I think needs to happen here? I think you and him need to get along more. I think you need to do something that is actually going to bring you guys closer. I mean, let's face it. There is contention between you two ever since you've known each other. I haven't seen you guys have one good interaction. Yeah, well, that's not to say that I haven't been trying. I have every intention of being nice to the guy. He just can't help but see me as lower than him just because I work in visual design. I mean, is it honestly such a big deal? To a guy like that, it is. I mean, I was really disappointed that day you took us to that cafe. I just knew there was no way my dad would enjoy it. Of course, my mom would enjoy something like that. She would enjoy anything that gets her out there into the sun. Well, that's an overstatement right there. What are you trying to say? That she's like a prisoner in that house or something? Well, obviously no. She does it out of her own will. She just really cares for her family. She's doing whatever she can to support my brother and my dad. She's been that way her whole life. That's the way she wants it. I had a feeling that was the type of lady she was. I kind of feel sorry for her, to be honest. I mean, doesn't she want to get out there and actually enjoy herself a little bit? She's just going to have to stay there and surf the rest of her life. Do you see a problem with that? She respects my father and my brothers. She has no issue in doing it. She actually considers it a pleasure to be able to have the life that she has. Are you sure about that? If she's truly happy with it, then I guess I'm not in a place to comment. Uh, by the way, I really like your mother. We get along quite well. She's a really nice lady. Well, I expect you to be saying the exact same thing about my dad. I need you guys to enjoy each other's company somehow. Alright, uh, what do you suggest? What does that guy like? I'm telling you right now, the first time we had a chat with each other, he actually suggested that we go to a stripper joint. Is that the type of thing you want me to be doing? Well, hey, if he enjoys that type of thing, why not? I expect you to do what you can to get along with my dad. You know what? How about this? My dad's a really old man now, and a lot of his friends have died in the line of duty. He puts on this tough exterior all the time. He doesn't want the people around him to be worried about him, but I can see through all of that. I know it's all a ruse. I know he's kind of hurt on the inside. That's a part of him that's going to be lonely. Okay, so what are you trying to get at here? What I'm trying to get at is, there's this bar that you should go to with him. Him and his friends would always go there after a hard day of work. They would clink their glasses together and cheer about how much of a good day they had. Reminisce on whatever stories they had, jumping through burning buildings and whatnot. I'll tell you the name of the bar. If you invite my dad to the place where he used to go a lot, then I'm sure he'd appreciate it. You don't even need to tell him that I was the one that told you to go there. Just act like it was out of your own volition. Emily, are you really serious about all of this? Do you really want me to go and do this with your dad? You know I have a lot of work to do myself, right? I mean, our marriage has lasted this long without your dad and I talking with each other all the time. Who's to say that we can't continue this way forever? 
Of course we can't. Are you seriously saying something that stupid? Do you even think about things at all? Think about what's on the horizon. If you really want to continue this marriage, you need to consider the fact that we're going to have kids soon. I don't know about you, but I would much rather have my parents around to help me than just us two. It's about time that you got on my dad's good side. At some point in time, you guys are going to have to learn how to live together. I want to argue with you, but you have a point for once. It is quite imperative that him and I find something that we like about each other. You're right, I'll go do it then. I'm not that much of a drinker. I haven't drunk since I was in college. And every time I did drink, I really regretted it. You know how much this means, right? For me to go out of my way like this. Stop treating it like you're doing me this massive favor or something. This is just your duty. You should be doing something like this. I'll send you the name of the bar tonight. And when you go, make sure you don't wear those flashy clothes that you always do. He doesn't like people that take care of themselves too much. You should go for a little bit of a gruff look like he has. Go for a workout or something. Go roll around in some mud. I'm going to have to ask you to repeat that one. You seriously did not tell me to go roll around in some mud just to impress your dad, did you? What are we, cavemen now? What an utter embarrassment. What was that all about? Was this meant to be some sort of sick joke or something? You wanted to invite me to one of my favorite bars where I'm well-respected, well-renowned by the people there, and you actually make a fool of yourself like that? I knew that you and I had some sort of feud against each other, but I didn't think you would actually take it this far. Are you kidding me right now? Are you actually the one that's getting angry at me for something like that? Bruce, it doesn't matter which way you look at this. What happened tonight is your fault. My fault? How could any of this be my fault? Who was the one puking all over the place? You know, ever since my old friends and I started going to that place, we haven't made a fool of ourselves, not once. We always went in there as gentlemen, respected the patrons, and respected the person that was serving our alcohol. I mean, sure, there were a lot of times where we were loud and probably obnoxious. At the same time, we wouldn't disrespect the venue like you have. You've got a lot of repairing to do with that bartender. If he sees you in that bar again, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulled out that little special toy he has under the counter. No way, I am not apologizing for anything that happened tonight. I mean, I do feel sorry for what happened, especially all the people that got puked on. This in no way is my fault. You're the one that pushed me to do all of that. I pushed you to do what? To learn how to hold your own and develop a little bit of tolerance? Oh, come on. You and I both know you could have kept that in if you wanted to. It's your weak little mind that forced you to puke all that stuff out. Are you seriously going to pin what happened tonight on something as stupid as that? Do you know how much you had me drinking tonight? I was keeping count. I was drinking about 10 glasses of beer an hour. You know I haven't been a heavy drinker, right? I haven't drunk since I was in college. And even then, I only ever had a couple of beers. If I had any more than that, I got close to passing out in front of everyone. So if you're going to talk to me about mental strength, well, I really exerted it tonight. I mean, to go from two beers to ten is quite the jump, don't you think? Honestly, I don't know if there's any hope of you and I getting along with each other, Sam. I mean, are you seriously telling me that you haven't had a fun night out ever since college? Oh, you are as dull as they come. Honestly, what is the merit of my daughter being married to you? Oh, come on. Don't start on that now. Do I really need to hear this again? I already listened to enough of it tonight. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, but the more things that pop up, the more it makes me think, you know? It just boggles the mind. I mean, here we are with the wimp that dresses like an absolute nerd, and my daughter thinks he's a good fit for her? Like, you actually tucked your shirt in to come to this bar. You don't have much swagger about you, do you? Not only that, but you don't earn much money. You've got no powerful aura about you. There's honestly no merit being married to you. Like, is she actually happy about her decision? Did you talk her into it or something? 
Honestly, I've come across a lot of weird things in my life, and this is probably the weirdest. You may not be happy with the situation, but we are, and that's the only thing that matters. When Emily and I were together, we made an agreement on how our marriage would work. We agreed that in order to get to the places where we wanted to be, she had to continue the work that she was doing, and I had to do the same. Now, obviously, I'm the one that has to stay at home all the time, so I've been taking care of the cooking and the cleaning. It was an arrangement that we were both happy with. It seemed like the perfect thing to do. It was only until after she got married that problems started to arise. She started talking the exact same way you do. I can't help but feel like you're poisoning her, trying to turn her against me. Hey, look, all I'm doing is just my job as a father. I'm just telling her what she needs to hear. I mean, what she decides to do with her life is up to her. I'm not going to force her to do anything. You're really going to get at me for giving my opinion? Yes, but our actions have consequences. And you knew she would act up if she listened to you too much. I mean, don't you see what you're doing here? You're actually causing turmoil in our relationship. Can you do us both a favor and just back off? Hold on a second. You don't actually expect me to back off, do you? If you care about your daughter and her happiness, that is exactly what I expect you to do. Just leave us alone. Let us flourish and enjoy our marriage. Time and time again, you continue to be an obstacle towards that. I cannot believe I'm listening to such crap right now. If I back off, the only person that benefits from it is you. You get to continue your amazing circumstance of leeching off of my daughter. Oh, come on, get real already. You know what? You're really confusing me tonight, Sam. I mean, what was this all about anyway? You get in contact with me telling me that you want to go to a bar together. It's been a while since you've had a drink, and you just need to relax for a change. Take it easy. I was very surprised that it turned out to be the place where I'd see my boys a lot. I was beginning to think you had good taste. Then you make the display that you did tonight, embarrassing me in front of all of my friends. What exactly are you playing at right now? Alright, fine. Look, I'll let you know what's going on. The truth of the matter is that I didn't find out about this bar on my own. In fact, after being there myself, I know that this isn't the place that I would go to willingly. It's certainly not the type of place where I feel safe. It was Emily. She was the one that told me about this place. Emily? Why would she do that? Well, the thing is, she really wants you and I to get along. Ever since she and I got married, there hasn't been one instance where I've enjoyed the company of my father-in-law. It's starting to weigh on her mind. She's getting worried. She's hesitant towards having kids because she doesn't know if she's going to get the support that she needs. And even then, what's the household going to look like when the father-in-law and the husband don't even get along with each other? Oh, my poor, poor girl. I can't believe she's thinking about this type of thing. Oh, such a shame. Such a shame she's in the position that she's in. I know. So do you understand the gravity of the situation? Do you see why you and I just need to get along? Like, come on, Bruce, do I really need to be doing this type of thing? Do I need to be making a fool of myself and going to places that I don't go to at all? Just give me your respect. Do it for your daughter and the stability of our new family. I know that you disagree with my way of life and the type of job I do. I know you think it doesn't earn any money. At the same time, I think it's necessary for us to just put our differences aside for something that's actually important. Wouldn't you agree with that? Is that honestly the type of stance that you're going to take with me? Is that really what you think needs to happen? You think I'm the one that needs to change, don't you? You think I'm the issue here. Well, clearly, who's the one that's been inconsiderate this whole time? I've been the one that's going out of my way. I've even gone to the bar that you enjoy going to. I've been doing everything that I can to get on your good side, and you just won't accept it. You continuously put me down. The person who needs to change here is you. You actually think a couple of little tricks like taking me to my favorite bar is going to garner my respect? What I need you to do is change yourself as a person. You have got to be kidding me right now. Are you still going on with that? I'm not changing who I am just because you don't like it, Bruce. Well, you're going to have to. 
because at the end of the day, I'm still against this marriage. I'm definitely against you two having children. I'm not going to have my grandson have the genetics of a wimp like you. So that's it. Then there's really no chance of you and I getting along with each other. You've already accepted that there's something inherently wrong with me and that there's nothing that I can do about it. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you show me that you're willing to do what it takes to be a real man, and then I might garner some respect for you. Okay, and so what is your idea of me being a real man? Are you actually going to tell me to join your firefighter squad again? You know what? That's a great idea. I'm glad you reminded me of it. That's exactly what you should do. We need a new member there, and I need you to fill the position. I'm getting older now, and it's about time that I retired. My body can't move like it used to. So I'm out of the game. I'm going to let one of the younger boys take my position, and someone's going to have to take his. That someone is going to be you. Okay, it seems that your department is in a bit of a pickle at the moment. At the same time, Bruce, I am not doing that. I'm going to keep doing what I've always done, playing to my strengths. I mean, yes, I get it. Your job requires a certain level of masculinity. You're doing good for the world, and I'm doing good too. I'm still helping people. I'm sure you can find someone else for that position. You really have no backbone, do you? You really want to spend the rest of your life just sitting at home cooking and cleaning? I'm giving you a chance here for Emily to actually respect you. Just think about it. Think about her father and her brothers. I mean, all of her brothers are doing something that a girl can respect. Some of them are in the law. One of them is in the fire brigade, too. These are strong guys that are doing what they can to protect society. It doesn't compare to the type of work that you do. There is no honor in what you do. No glory. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you on that one, Bruce. It's true. I might not be doing something as awesome as you guys. That doesn't mean that it's not as important. A job is a job at the end of the day. If something needs to be done, someone needs to do it. That is exactly what I'm doing. Well, make as many excuses as you want. I'm going to keep that position open just for you. I know someday you're going to come around and see sense. I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but my daughter's distaste for you was going to grow over time. That is when you're finally going to realize that you need to do something about yourself. See you later, chump. Make sure you take care of the house while I'm away. I've got some very capable men in the fire brigade, but I don't want to get a call saying that my own house got burnt down because you were careless. I want you to make sure everything is in order. Don't you make a mess of it. I don't want you having silly little parties with your geeky friends there either. If you think that you're going to get away with it without me realizing it, then think again. I'm a lot more perceptive than you realize. You could even say that I've got a sixth sense for that type of thing. Something that I've developed after all those years in the brigade. What are you going on about, Bruce? What do you mean, see you later? Are you going somewhere or something? Sounds like you expect me to clean your house, and I'm sorry, but I haven't been informed of anything like that. In fact, I'm not even going to be in town. I'm going on holiday. So whatever you want me to do, I can't exactly do it. Well, look at you. Maybe you're a little craftier than I realized. You're actually going on holiday at the same time that your family is going on holiday? Well, that is a smart move. I think I even played something like that on my own wife when I was a younger man. I'm sorry, what are you talking about now? I'm talking about you going on some secret vacation. Let me guess, you got a lover in a different country or something. She's been sending you some lewd photos while my daughter wasn't looking. Oh, come on, we know how internet dating is these days. It's all the hype right now. I bet you got some girlfriend on the other side of the world. Who knows, she's probably a boyfriend. You probably don't even know what she looks like. Bruce, what is this crap that you're talking about right now? I'm going on a holiday with my family. 
I'm not going on some secret vacation to visit someone I've been internet dating. Do I honestly look like the type of person to do that? Well, for the time that you have, I'd assume that is exactly what you would be doing. Anyway, what are you talking about? You going on some family holiday? That doesn't make any sense. Your family is already going away. Oh, oh wait, uh, how can I be so stupid? I know exactly what is going on here. This is your second family, right? The one that you've been hiding from everyone. You never stop with your fantasies, do you? Well, yeah, come on, it only makes sense. That's what you've been using your time for whenever my daughter goes to work. It's the whole reason why you don't have a proper job in the first place. Think about the position you're in. It's such an advantageous situation to be able to hide things from your wife's back. You must have some secret family that you visit while she's not there. I wonder what the kids are named. Is one of them called Diego? Bruce, you're talking crap right now. I don't want to listen to it. I have to meet Emily at the airport. I've got things to do. I still haven't packed yet. Hold on a second. What is going on here? Why would you be coming to the airport? Are you actually going on this vacation too? Well, I'd like to ask the same thing, to be honest. No one told me that you were coming. It was just meant to be me, Emily, and the baby. Well, I'd like to say the same thing, to be honest. I wasn't expecting you to be there either. Why not? She told me that this was a family vacation, and I am family, aren't I? Yeah, but I thought that was actually the real family. You know, the members that are actually respected in the family. Okay, and so the father of your grandchild isn't one of the respected members? You really have a lot of disdain for me, don't you, Bruce? Well, look, I'm sorry, but you went off and got that child without my permission. I told you that I don't approve of you having a kid. Well, thankfully, I don't need your permission on whether or not I have a kid. This is an arrangement between your daughter and me. You don't have any say in it. That's true, that's true. At the same time, if you wanted my respect, you would have done the proper thing first. You would have got yourself out of that ridiculous designing job and got a job that I actually recommended for you. Okay, and over the years, you recommended me to be a firefighter, a mechanic, and a construction worker. These are all things that aren't suited to my skill set. So you can keep sitting there being dissatisfied with my decisions. You're being stubborn about what I should do, and I'm being stubborn about you changing the way you think about me. It is going to be an amazing time going on this family trip with you, Bruce. Can you just tell me what is going on here? Who was the one that organized this? It was my daughter, wasn't it? That's right. Emily was the one that wanted to do something like this. She said it's about time that we did something as a family, especially now that we have a new member. I'm going to take a guess and say this is her panicking about what's going on. I'm sorry? What did you say? You think she's actually panicking? Well, to some extent, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, she's worried about the stability of this child and if everyone's going to get along. The relationship between you and I has been a cause for concern for years now. Nothing has really improved it. It doesn't matter how much time we spend away from each other, and it doesn't matter how much time we spend with each other. You and I are just like fire and water. These two don't match. At the same time, she would actually invite us to a family trip like this. It's quite strange, to be honest. Honestly, I love my daughter, but what is going on through her head? She must have thought that if we changed the circumstance, if we changed the activity, something might happen between us. At least that's what I'm assuming her train of thinking is. That must be the stupidest thing in the world. The only thing that's going to fix this relationship is you waking up to yourself. Well, look, Bruce, we're going to have a long time together. We're going to be stuck in the hotel in a different country for a couple of months. I get it. I know your feelings towards me. I understand that you raised your family with pride. You wanted your sons to be as tough as possible, and you expected the same of your son-in-law as well. Unfortunately, the circumstances are what they are. You have a son-in-law, and you also have a grandson. You've got no choice but to accept that. So, I'm going to do my best to get along with you on this trip, and I want you to do the same. I don't want you to hold any prejudices against me. Can you promise me that much? 
Yeah, all right then. Why not? I'll do what I can. A lot of money has been spent on this trip. Coming out of my daughter's pocket again. I'll stop myself from calling you a wimp. I'm not making any promises, though. Hey, come on, guys. This isn't funny. I've been standing out here knocking on the door for ages now. You realize that we don't have that many keys, right? Everyone else wanted a key just in case they wanted to leave the hotel room. Well, look, I've got everything that everyone wanted. I've got all the food and the drinks. I've got little things that we need to have a little bit of a party in the hotel room. I'm telling you, it wasn't easy carrying all of this stuff. Do you know how many bags I've had to carry home? Honestly, I am not a mule. So do me a favor and open the door up so I can dump this stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. This is just hilarious. You're actually standing outside that door like an idiot, aren't you? Holding all those bags? <laughs> Boy, I'm glad I'm not you. Oh, come on, Bruce. Enough with the games already. Open up the damn door. I am this close to flipping out. Do you realize how much of a struggle it was to get all of this? I had to go to five different stores just to get all the crap that you wanted. Can you imagine me carrying all of this stuff around town and finally making it to the hotel? I am telling you right now, I'm not exactly in the party mood. I'm definitely not even in a good mood. So can you just do me a favor and open the door? Well, if you want the door to open so badly, how about you go down to the reception and see if the room is available yet? You know, if you're lucky, enough time has passed for the maid to actually clean it for you. You might get a fresh bed. What are you talking about right now? Are you trying to say that you checked out or something? Of course we did. We're done. The holiday is finished. We're heading back home now. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Yeah, look, everyone's on their way home. We're all pretty tired. I mean, the girls are all sleeping on the bus. They are so puckered out. We had a lot of fun on this trip, didn't we? I hope it's a good last memory that you have of us. Can you just stop talking nonsense right now and tell me what is going on? Okay, well, what's going on right now, buckaroo, is that you're getting ditched. You're done. You're abandoned. Banished from the family. What is that even supposed to mean? I mean, you got me to get all of this stuff, right? Why would you ditch me like this? Well, hey, <laughs> I wanted some sort of comic relief as I was going back home. I have to say, Emily was really against it. I mean, I found out how she really felt about you. She's been meaning to get a divorce with you for a long time. She didn't want to do something like this. She said it was taking it too far. She quoted it as childish. I know deep down inside, she thought it was pretty funny, though. <laughs> I mean, I can just see you right now. I can imagine you running around trying to get all that stuff, sweating out there in the sun, only to be standing at that door all on your own, realizing that your family are gone now. <laughs> so, this was all intentional. All of you decided to intentionally leave me, and you're actually telling me that Emily wanted to do this as well? Oh, hell yeah. She's the one that's been putting up with this stuff the most. I mean, you should have seen this one coming. Don't tell me you're actually surprised at the fact that you're losing your wife. Well, am I meant to be expecting something like this? Here I am on a holiday, thinking everyone is meant to be getting along with each other. All it feels like is another opportunity for everyone to get vindictive of me. You should have done your job as a husband and this wouldn't have happened in the first place. It really makes sense that Emily made this decision. Did Emily actually make this decision, or was it another little thought that you put into her head? Another little scheme that you decided to come up with? Hey, like I always say, she's her own woman now. She doesn't need me to tell her what to do. She already knows what the right thing to do is. I mean, sure, things are going to be tough now that she has to raise this kid on her own. Uh, but come on, she's still pretty young. She's not that bad of a looker. I'm pretty sure she can snatch up a good guy in no time. As a matter of fact, her brother have a very good circle of friends. 
if she spends a little bit of time in that crowd, I'm sure one of them is going to catch feelings. I can't believe that she would be this selfish. So what you're telling me right now is true, isn't it? She would rather sacrifice the stability of her family to get a better guy or something. I can't believe that she would be so selfish. Hey, don't blame her. I mean, all she's doing is finding the best partner to raise her kid. I mean, think about it. What future is there going to be for the child if you're the father? Is everyone going to be okay with that kid growing up to be a loser who gets his wife to pay for everything, including the house? I'm sorry, what did you just say? Are you trying to insinuate that I'm not the one who pays for everything? Oh, of course you're not. You're the loafer. Emily's told me everything. She's the one who's paying for the house. You're the guy who stays at home and barely does anything. You might cook a little dish here and there, but no one enjoys it. Emily has complained to me about it countless times. You don't pull your own weight for your family. You get her to do everything. I mean, sometimes you even leave the cleaning to her. Can you believe that? She already has enough to do with her everyday life, and you actually put that on her plate as well? That's just despicable right there. Only scum would force that upon their own wife. That is a lie. That's not how it is at all. I do every bit of the cleaning. She hasn't helped me once. All she does is complain about it. Not only that, but she contributes to the mess as well. Besides, let's not forget the fact that I also have a job. I'm also as busy as her, if not more so. Her job ends 9 to 5. I can do mine whenever I want to. I should be the one to clean. These are all lies. I'm telling you right now, you could have avoided all of this. I mean, all you had to do was something very simple. If you just changed your job, if you had just listened to me, things wouldn't have turned out this way. You would have come home to a wife that actually respects you. You'd come home to a household where you expect your family to be there. So, what are you all expecting to happen from this point on? You expect me and Emily to get a divorce? Is that honestly what you want? You want the child to grow up in some broken family? Hey, it's not going to be broken if she finds the guy who's right for her. For a girl like Emily, he'll raise that child properly. He'll do whatever he can for it. As for you, you can stay the hell out of our lives. You were lucky enough to get a girlfriend, let alone someone like Emily. You deserve to be put in your place. Get out there and find someone that's appropriate for you. And don't you dare think about coming back to this house. Wow, you have got to be kidding me right now. So I don't even get to stay in that home, huh? You guys are actually thinking of kicking me out? Why not? We have every right to. You haven't been the one who's been paying for everything here. It's been Emily this whole time. She has the authority. Her word is law, and we don't want you there. Okay, fine. If that's the way you want it to be, then so be it. But I don't want you guys running back to me. You better not regret this decision. Okay, this has got to be a joke. This seriously can't be happening. You and I need to talk. What's the matter, Bruce? Sounds like you're very concerned. That's very rare of you. You're always the type to act really tough, right? You always want to pretend that there's nothing wrong. I wonder why you're messaging me after all this time. You know damn well why I'm messaging you right now. You knew this type of thing would happen, didn't you? I'm sorry, Bruce. I have no idea what you're talking about. I knew what would happen. I thought you and I were going to part ways and not talk to each other again. You were that eager to push me out of the family, right? It is very strange for you to come running back to me. Don't think I'm doing this because I want to. I don't really have a choice. You forced me to do this. I haven't forced you to do anything. I've done exactly what you wanted. I've kept my distance. I let you and your daughter have a family by yourselves. You don't need me to be a part of it. I'm even paying for child support, right? There shouldn't be any issues here. I expect you to just leave me alone. Now, you listen here. 
but I'm not going to sit here and play games. I want you to be honest with me. When you agreed to get that divorce, you knew that this would all happen, didn't you? You knew that my daughter would be in a pinch and that I would need to come back for your help. I wonder what you're talking about right now. I know you don't want to believe it, but I am a very busy man. Do you think I care about how busy you are? You're going to tell me that you're busy doing the stupid design thing, right? I'm sorry, but doing a little bit of art isn't as important as sorting out this situation. You made a mess, and I expect you to clean it up. Bruce, what are you talking about? I'm talking about our financial situation. You knew something like this would happen. You knew we would be having trouble paying the rent for this place. I want you to take responsibility and come back here. Start paying the rent here. Are you kidding me right now? Why would I do that? I'm already divorced from my wife, aren't I? It's not my responsibility anymore. You guys wanted to live there so much, and you wanted to kick me out, and all I'm doing is letting you stay there. I mean, why are you going back on your word now, Bruce? You had no respect for me. You didn't want anything to do with me. Yeah, okay, well, that was before I knew that you were the one who was actually paying for this place. You think you could have told me that a little bit earlier? I might have let you stay married to my daughter. Things would have worked out for you in the end. Now it's come to this. I need you to pay this place off or else they're going to kick us out. We're going to have to find somewhere cheaper to live. Wait, hold on a second. What do you mean, kick you out? I thought you were living with your wife. You guys had your own home. Well, uh, we were. But to take care of the baby, we decided to move in with the family. We stopped renting the place that we originally lived in, and we started living here with Emily. I see. Well, I don't really see how that's a big issue. The place where Emily and I were originally living was quite expensive. Her and I were dreaming big. We wanted to start living in a luxurious place from the onset. You think I don't know that already? I know what Emily is like. I know she chose that house for a reason. But because of you and your actions, she's had to support this household on her own. She had to pay for everything. Now I need you to. And? That's exactly what you were thinking in the first place, right? Before she was the one paying for everything while I was freeloading at home. There shouldn't be any issues. Just continue doing what you've always done. Yeah, okay, but then I thought that she was actually capable of paying off the house. I thought the reason why you continued living there was because her income was high enough. I didn't think you were actually the one paying behind the scenes. Now that you're out of the picture, we can't possibly afford to keep this place. We need you back here. We need you back here now. Well, this is interesting. What happened to that guy that hated my guts? The guy that had no shred of respect for me at all. This is sounding a lot different from him. Look, I understand that. I understand the way that I've treated you. But maybe at the end of the day, you weren't so bad. I mean, let's face the facts. You were the one paying for this place, right? Maybe you were taking up more masculine roles than I was thinking originally. Are you happy now? Uh, you get a little bit of my respect. Who knows, if you start paying for this place again and come back and live here, maybe I'll give you a little bit more of it. Your respect means nothing to me, Bruce. I don't care what someone like you thinks. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Are you actually trying to say that you're above me? A little brat like you that sits on his computer all day? That's right, that's exactly what this brat is saying. I am better than you. You see, here's the thing. I had a lot of respect for you before, Bruce. I mean, you were a fireman. You were helping people. I thought for sure that you would have a good heart, that you would care about that type of thing. Unfortunately, I misunderstood. I made an assumption about you just based on your work. You're actually a really horrible person. You even admitted to me that you don't care about saving people at all. You only did that job for the thrill of it, just for the excitement. I think the idea of just jumping into a house was enough for you, and you didn't really care about saving people. They were just the secondary objective. How dare you make such an assumption of me? Do you have any respect for your elders at all? 
I respect everyone, but I only give respect to where it's given in return. There hasn't been one conversation where you and I have seen eye to eye. There's not one time where you've actually accepted me as your son-in-law. Uh, sorry, Bruce, but you are nothing to me now. You and my ex-wife. You really are a bitter little human being, aren't you? You can't see how dire our situation is at the moment. You have no inclination to help us out at all. Oh, come on, stop over dramatizing this. How dire is your situation? I mean, you can't pay for an expensive apartment. I get it. You're going to have to move out soon. But is that really the end of the world? It's not like you're going to die or something. You're not going to go without food. Just learn to downgrade and you'll be happy with your life. Like hell I'm doing that. I'd rather die than sacrifice my pride and dignity. All my children were meant to be successful. Every single one of them, including my daughter. She was meant to find a nice, handsome guy. A guy that has money. A guy that's going to take care of her. She wasn't meant to live in some shoddy old apartment where the roof is creaking and it's about to fall on her head. That is not the future I envisioned for her. I'm not going to put her down to that level. Well, it looks like she couldn't find that 10 out of 10 amazing, perfect guy. None of this really surprises me. I always knew that you were that type of person. I had a feeling she would be finding it hard out there in the dating market. Let's face it, it doesn't matter how beautiful she is. She's a mom, after all. Do you really think that a guy that's super rich is going to go for a girl like her and commit to her? That is unlikely. I doubt even a regular guy would do that knowing that he has to take responsibility for another person's kid. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe you should set your priorities straight. You're always sitting on your high horse acting like you're better than everyone. Let's take a look at what you're actually doing. At the end of the day, you're just neglecting your own child. I mean, it's clear you don't care about him. If you really cared about your kid, you would do what you can to provide him with the home that he needs. Do you really want him to live in some cramped apartment with his mother? Do the manly thing and come back and raise your son. Yeah, right. I am not going to do that in a million years. Well, there you go. That right there just shows how much of a piece of crap you are. You know, you can say whatever you want about me, but I would never do that to my own child. I'd never abandon one of my own. No matter how rude and arrogant you like to call me, I am not that heartless. Neither am I. Bruce, you think I would actually do that to my child? Of course not. If it's another person's child, on the other hand, it's not going to weigh on my conscience. I'm sorry, what did you just say? What are you talking about something so stupid now? Why are you bringing someone else's child into this? That's not what we're talking about. Now I'm talking about you being a proper father and coming back here raising your kid. You still haven't realized yet, have you? I'm not surprised. I had a feeling that your daughter would try and hide that from you too. I mean, it's obvious that you're very prideful of your family. To think that your own daughter would do something like that would break your heart. What are you talking about right now? Can you just spit it out already? I'm in a really stressful situation. I don't want you beating around the bush with me. That kid that Emily is looking after every day, and the kid that I used to be looking after, wasn't even mine to begin with. Huh? What is that even supposed to mean? I know, right? It's hard to believe, isn't it? Who would ever think that sweet old Emily would cheat on her husband? It seemed like it would never happen. Someone like her would never do that. Well, guess what? That's exactly what she's done. You're lying to me. It's all lies. What a stupid thing to say. You really think that's going to dissuade me from pressing you? You think that's going to revoke your responsibility as a father? Just trying to say that the kid's someone else's? That is low, even by your standards, Tom. All I'm doing is telling the truth. I mean, I can get a blood test with the kid and see if I'm the actual father. I guarantee you that I am not. Well, come on then. Why don't you do that? Why don't you show me some proof? I know why you won't show me proof. It's because you don't have any. I can give you his number if you want. Is that proof enough for you? What are you talking about? You're gonna give me whose number? The guy that Emily slept with. I actually met him. 
What? That guy's quite an interesting character. I don't think Emily knew what she was getting herself into when she had that little adventure with him. I will say that he is good looking. Anyone would fall for a guy like that. But that amount of clingy behavior must get tiresome really quick. I wonder if Emily is really prepared to have a family with this guy. None of this is my consent right now. What are you going on about? Who is this guy and where did you meet him? He was on that holiday. Actually, it was straight after you guys decided to ditch me. I'm sorry, what now? I don't know how that guy did it, but he managed to track us down. He's quite a good stalker. It's almost as if he's done this type of thing before. He found out exactly where we were going and what hotel room we were in. He was going to burst in and confess his love for Emily. He didn't care what was going to happen. He crossed paths with me. Scared the crap out of me too. It almost felt like he wanted to fight me. He pushed me up against the wall, demanding I tell him where Emily was. Demanding that I tell him where his lover was. I told him that I was going to get a divorce with her. Her and I were finished. After that, he started to calm down a lot more. He became more rational and I was able to actually have a conversation with him. It was at that point where I found out everything. Hold on a second. What are you telling me right now? This can't be true. I mean, it just can't be. This is all made up, right? My little Emily wouldn't do something like this. It's not in her character. I didn't raise her to be this way. Yeah, well, you did train her to hate her own husband, so you can't really blame her for doing something like this. You're the one who drove her to these types of actions. You should have expected her to hate her own husband and to start liking other guys. So after that, the guy decided to give it a rest. I mean, he had every intention of starting a fight with me in front of Emily. If that's what it meant to separate her from me, then that's what he was going to do. He wanted me to realize that she was cheating so I would get a divorce and he'd get his chance. I'm really glad that I met that guy. I mean, the moment I saw his face, I could start seeing things differently in the kid. I looked at the photos, and there's no way that I can think it's mine anymore. I am 100% sure it's his. Well, look, you can't be so sure of that. There's still a chance that this kid might be yours. If you ask me, you're just trying to divert responsibility at the moment, pretending that it's not yours so that you don't have to do anything for it. Oh, come on, you know I'm right, don't you? That's exactly what's going on here. Look, if you really want me to, I'll go get a test. But you know what? I think I'll let you just meet the guy for yourself. I mean, he's very clingy towards Emily. I'm sure he's going to show you his face anytime now. Okay, uh, fine, I see how it is. We'll just have to do that then. I'm pretty sure a girl like Emily pulled an amazing guy. He must have a lot of money on him. He'll be the one to pay for the rent. Uh, yeah, I highly doubt that. The guy was a janitor. Could you believe that? She stooped as low as to actually do it with a janitor? I must say you have to give yourself a pat on the back, Bruce. Your manipulation worked out quite well. What? No, 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 no. I'm not having that. I'm not having my daughter stoop to that level. I want you back here now. What's the amount of rent that they're charging for this place? You must have been earning a lot of money, right? I've been trying to tell you that this whole time. Well, good. If that's the case, I want you back here. I'll give you my daughter. I don't even care if she detests it. I'll convince her. I need you back in this house and supporting us. I'll give you my respect. I'll do whatever you want. It sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? Who am I kidding? You and I both know it is. I'll see you here tonight, then. No can do, Bruce. I am done with you. I am probably done with dating in general, too. All I want to do is focus on myself. I am sick of the stress of being in a relationship with someone. I am even more sick of having to deal with that person's family. Thank you for the experience. You've shown me what I really want in life. Oh, come on. Don't do that to me. I'm giving you an opportunity here to be with my daughter. Are you seriously going to pass that up? Okay, fine. I know what this is. You want me to apologize for everything I've said. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all those times I called you a wuss. You know what? I'll strike you a deal. Every type of word that I called you, you can just spit it right back at me. 
Worse, a wimp, a nerd, anything you want. I don't care. I just want you back at this house. Bruce, do you hear me? Don't you dare ignore me. Bruce? Bruce! As predicted, Emily's secret partner got in contact with them. He confessed his love to her and how much he missed her. When Bruce met him, he was a lot more pitiful than he originally imagined. The guy was super skinny, didn't take care of himself, and had an extremely weak aura about him. It was all the things that Bruce detested. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, he is the father of the kid. The test proved as much. Bruce was very reluctant to call this guy a part of the family, but he didn't have a choice at the end of the day. With what little income he had, and the income that Emily had, they managed to live in that house for a little bit. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Before long, they had to move out into a cramped apartment. They were living there with Emily, Bruce, and the guy that she cheated with. Emily's mom lived there for a short period of time, but soon she grew sick of the atmosphere there. She was actually getting sick of Bruce and his demanding behavior for a long time now. She was being degraded by him on a daily basis. She saw it as a good chance to get away. I really applaud her for finally doing it after all these years. As for the household that they lived in, Emily finally grew to hate her father. He felt insulted that he had to live in a place like that. He didn't expect to finish his retirement in that fashion. And he definitely didn't think that he'd be seeing someone that he considered worse than me every day of his life. I can imagine that that house is absolute chaos to live in. The guy that Emily cheated with just does not jive well with the personality of Bruce. Who knows what trouble will begin brewing there in the future. As for me on the other hand, I've put a lot more time into focusing on myself. All my finances go towards me. I don't spend it on anyone else. I have to say, it's a really good breather to be a little bit selfish for once in my life. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe in order to see more videos like this one. Please be sure to comment and check back for new videos as well.